everybody. Welcome to day two of What Do Plants Talk About? Um, let's see if anybody comes on. I hope I'm live. <laughs> um, all right, so the first thing that I wanted to do was read just one little bit from this book again. Um, let's see. Cool. All right. Again, it's the book, The Overstory. Um, there's a little passage, again, on that first page that I read from yesterday. Uh, and it talks about what the trees are talking about. Um, and it says, ancient oaks wave prophecies of future weather. The several hundred kinds of hawthorn laugh at the single name they're forced to share. Laurels insist that even death is nothing to lose sleep over. I love that so much. I think how funny is it that we, we name plants so many things. And I just love that, you know, the several hundred kinds of hawthorn laugh at the single name they're forced to share. And then this last little bit, the laurels insist that even death is nothing to lose sleep over. And that's really what I wanted to talk about today was the ways that we as people get all freaked out about death or when something is shifting. And there have been a few people who have um, posted something in this group about their plants that aren't doing well. Um, there was someone who posted about their spider plants and and people have a lot of emotions and plants don't and I've mentioned this in another Facebook live that I did with Georgia that like sometimes plants die and it's okay <laughs> you can get new plants and um, if you let things stop being super significant, it I've found that it makes it easier to talk to the plants. Um, plants aren't making things super significant. They're simply growing. And when you make things significant, you just kind of shift the way that your energy is moving. You slow it down in a certain way you like solidify it in a certain way and if you want to talk to something that is uh, energetically light and non-significant it can be very helpful if you um, at least for a moment put aside the significance so that thing of the laurels insist that you know even death is nothing to lose sleep over like when you have a plant that is um, not doing well, you can add to its difficulties with the strength of your energy. Your energy um, kind of focusing on it not doing well can put a lot of energy in that and like amplify it. Um, and if you can see a plant that's dying or shifting or has some like withered areas or something like that and just ask what's going on and then allow yourself to again like I was saying yesterday be facilitated by that the then you get to discover what that creates um, I have some stories of uh, maybe I feel like I tell the same stories all the time, so maybe you've heard this, but there was a tree that had been given to me by a patient of mine um, when I had an acupuncture clinic, and over the winter it died. You know, died back like most plants do, which is to say that their energy just goes from the the leaves and photosynthesizing all of the sunlight, their energy goes into the ground and is doing other things there. Well, so there was one winter where all of the energy went deep into the ground and then when spring came, the energy did not come back up. And so all of the rest of the plants started to come to life and this tree looked dead for months beyond when it should have come back. 
And so I went one day with a friend and just put my hands on the tree. And we were going to do something else, but I was just curious. And so I just asked her and I did this myself to like send our energy into the roots and see if it was alive, see what was going on. And there was like the littlest bit of energy. So then we just asked for that energy to flow through, through the earth, through the tree, up through our bodies and out and just really ask for that flow of energy to get stronger like a wave and then there was a moment where it just shifted something just shifted and then we stopped and that was it and it you know it it wasn't hard we didn't have to do push-ups we didn't have to chant we just asked for it and then noticed and we didn't have any point of view i mean for me the tree was already maybe dead and i was going to look at how i needed to get it out of the ground um and then that week all of these little shoots started to come and the tree came back to life we were able to contribute our energy to pull the energy of the tree to express itself up above the ground um and how cool is that? It was quite easy. And you may find as you play around with talking to plants more that your like even the slightest contribution um, can really create a huge change with how the plants are expressing themselves. But if they don't, if the plants don't completely shift, would you be okay with that? Would you be willing to allow the life processes to, to grow and die and shift and wither without getting too upset? Um, Gary Douglas, the founder of Access Consciousness, talks about how our joy can really be healing to the earth and our sadness not so much. So if you can allow yourself to be present with all of the constant change without, you know, withering up inside, without your energy getting stuck and shrunken, what contribution can that be to the world? And again, you know, like I said, the, what do plants talk about? when you start to talk to a plant it can facilitate so much so when you notice that a plant is quote unquote dying it can facilitate so much for you it can bring up so much and you being willing to be present with that is part of what the conversation is and you can ask you know if you see a plant withering you can ask you know what is this sometimes plants need to rest. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of information about that, both with, you know, light and dark, that they require the darkness too. Um, and their energy is moving all around the plant, depending on the seasons. And so there are these moments that, that um, the, the blossoms go away. And that is not wrong. That's simply a part of it. So allowing the plants to talk to you about even the difficult things can be such a gift. If you allow them to show you what's going on and just don't use anything as a chance to judge yourself. It's, it's not really going to help. Or perhaps you can try it, like I know so many of us have been doing, using everything to judge ourselves. What does that actually create? You know, um, when talking to plants, uh, plants don't really speak in the language of judgment. <laughs> At least no plants that I've met 
Um, and so maybe you can just cut that out of your vocabulary while you're talking to a plant um, and see what, what that's like. And then let's see, there is, I wanna see, okay, so there are all of these plants around me. I'm gonna go grab this one. This was just given to me um, a few days ago for my birthday. Isn't it adorable? <laughs> I love the little ivy. It's just super precious. And um, these plants, sometimes these flowers are so beautiful and then they'll uh, wither and die. And you can pluck them off when they're dead. And I noticed that some people, um, don't groom their plants. Plants love to be groomed and touched and it actually activates something in them because, you know, in the wild, there's like the breeze and other animals that go past and plants aren't as um, delicate as you might think. Um, and so you can, when you're engaging with a plant, you can touch it. <laughs> and um, and actually help by taking some of the dead parts off so that it doesn't have to keep on trying to send energy to that. Um, and I probably will go on and on about some different ways of uh, working with plants energetically in the different, um, well, in the adventure that is talk to the plants and in this class that I have coming up on Friday. And, but I just wanted to um, suggest or let you know that plants are okay with being touched and that um, you can take off the dead parts. And especially if you're someone like me, who's a little OCD, it might be very fun for you. And so the challenge for today is to go touch a plant and to let yourself even prune, maybe, even uh, remove some of the dead pieces. And all you have to do is just go up to the plant and ask, is there anything that it would like to be, to have removed? And, um, you know, if you are using your hand, that's helpful because sometimes the the pieces that are really ready to go will come off really quickly. If you want to start cutting, um, it's best to use like really sharp scissors and clean ones. Um, and there's so much more that we can go into about that. But just for today, go up and let yourself uh, remove something from a plant. Let yourself notice something that's dead. If if you have a chance, if you have a plant around that's um, asking for that, and uh, just take something off and notice how does the plant respond. Maybe you'll notice something obvious. Maybe it won't be obvious to you. Um, one thing that I often experience when I do that is that I notice that the plant looks a little bit more beautiful without the dead pieces there and I do this all the time on walks um, and then when I go you know back and forth and pass by a plant that I have kind of cleaned up I notice that it receives more admiration when it's not uh, full of little dead flowers or something and um, and it's just fun to get to actually go up to the plant and touch it and just notice what that feels like in my own body so that's today's little challenge touch a plant and ask if you can contribute by removing anything and if you don't get a yes then don't. <laughs> you don't have to pull a plant apart just because I said something. Um, so let's see. Is there anything else other than admiring the sweetness of this plant? I'm grateful for you all who are 
taking part in this Talk to the Plants adventure. I'm curious what it is that we will look at tomorrow. And today, again, know that even death is nothing to lose sleep over. And that when a plant dies, it can create so much and it's not necessarily that you're bad or that the plant is um, mad at you or upset with you or anything like that. And it may also be something simply to facilitate you to stop and take a moment and get present with what's going on in your world and let go of any of the judgment that you have of yourself. And then move on and smell the roses. All right, thank you all so much. I'll see you tomorrow.